One of the things I find to be the most damaging to the Christian religion, um, to people that m might not have a good understanding as to what Christians should believe, uh, is the tendency of many Christians today to be literalists. And nowhere is this seen more so than in the story of Adam and Eve that we're talking about today. Um, it's uh, crazy to me to hear of so-called biblical archaeologists looking for the location of the Garden of Eden. Um, this is nonsense because the story of Adam and Eve as found in the book of Genesis is a archetypal metaphor for understanding the ineffable things of the divine. Because these things are so far beyond us, esoterically speaking, metaphysically speaking, spiritually speaking, um, so far outside of the realm of the universe in which we live and understand, we need a story to understand these things that are ineffable, that are beyond us. And this is where Adam and Eve come in, because it explains the problem of evil in a way that archetypally responds to our ne the necessity of us to maintain stories. Okay, so was Adam and Eve the first man and woman? No. <laughs> what they are was the first cosmic principles of yin and yang, the divine masculine and the divine feminine manifested in the realm of physicality for the first time, corporeality. So Adam is the active principle personified. Eve is the passive principle personified. Incidentally, that's why the original sin of the consumption of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, which they were forbidden to partake in, did so at the temptation of the serpent, came through Eve because passivity is the natural proclivity to submit to entropy. So the passive principle would be the way in which this would enter the world. And what was the penalty for eating of the uh, fruit of knowledge of good and evil? Death. So death comes into the world. All strictly archetypal metaphors, not, historic, not a historical story. There's no historicity to it at all. Of course, people don't understand that. Now, when we get to the serpent, we need to understand who was that, even archetypally within the story. Is it the devil? Well, traditional Christianity has thought so, but it's not. So next time we will identify who the serpent is, and that is Yetzirah.